Yeah, there's uh, the next stage in our uh, my methods, uh, tailoring for the atypical figure, the gentleman. So what I've done is I've, in fact, what I've done, and I'll, I'll take the kilt off for, us for a, an after bit where I'll show you how I've uh, tailored the kilt. So I've done the pleats, I've put in the canvas, I've basted together the inside apron, but I've left it intentionally long so that I can chalk it and alter it as need be. Because you reach a point um, in bespoke tailoring that you reach a point where it's best to get a fitting before you move forward. Because if you work past that stage and then take a fitting and realize you've got to change a bunch of things, you have to undo work and it's wasted effort and that annoys me. So what I've done is I've basted, sorry, I've sewn the pleats, I've put in the canvas, I've shaped the inner apron, and now I've brought it for a trial fitting. So I've put um, the, the, the inside apron is good, it's a little long, but I've marked where the, the end of the strap is going to go. I've marked where I can bring, reduce the apron back to so I can sew it in place. I've hung the, the, the kilt on the gentleman and I've marked where the, out, the, left, the right hand edge of the outside apron will go. And I'm quite pleased because this time um, the numbers have conformed to reality and vice versa. Because sometimes you'll take measurements and despite your best measurements, even though it's, the numbers are absolutely right, for whatever reason, they don't conform to the figure. So by doing this, by, by doing a check before I move on, I'm not going to sort of paint myself into a corner and then have to redo. So the apron is hanging nicely. If we look on the, on the right hand side, because we've gone for a, a, a larger apron, the apron is draping nicely on the outside. And what I will do, if you wouldn't mind holding that for a bit, is I'm going to grab my needle and thread. And isn't it funny, the silly things that you find unable to do with a mask on, things like, I don't know, lick the edge of a, of a thread so you can thread it. So what I'm gonna do, I see how it's draping. I'm gonna confirm that, because I haven't pressed this yet, right? I'm just gonna baste down I'm, I'm rolling, as you can see, I'm ro maybe able to see I'm rolling the cloth to the position where I want, where the cloth is telling me that the crease should be and where I want it to be. Right? And now, now I don't have to re rely on my memory when I go back to the shop. So I've done that. I'm not going to cut the thread off. I'm just going to leave it alone because quite frankly, I recite, recycle the darn things and almost put a, a needle for you guys to discover in your carpet later, but no. And then looking at the back, I find that, because I haven't basted or pressed the pleats yet, I find that the pleats are hanging very nicely indeed. There's nothing that I need to change there. Because sometimes, again, because you're pressing on a flat surface, sometimes you need a tailor's ham to press the curve of the backside into the kilt. That's something I don't see anybody else doing. I see it in historical films, but not modern. So that where it's not going to be necessary in this case is because it's all hanging perfectly straight. So I know I can go back to the shop and I can bet baste and press these in confidence. So the next stage, having done so, now again remember I mentioned the forward, if you want to remember your arm up a bit, the the forward incline to the pelvis, I'm still seeing a little bit, bit of that on the garment. I'm still seeing that the lower edge of the aprons has the potential to be longer, look longer than in, the, than in the back. We want to avoid that. I can't predict with confidence how I'm going to change that in the future. So what I'm going to do from here, again, I'm going to carry on with the work, top band on, straps, buckles, maybe get to the point where the lining is ready to go in and then bring it back for one more fitting, see how it hangs at that point and frankly see what occurs to me because this is unknown territory. I don't encounter this very often and, fr and frankly I don't have the experience to, pre to confidently predict in advance how I'm going to do it. So there we are. It's looking very well and I can finally admit to Rob that this wasn't just an exercise month for my YouTube channel. This is actually his kilt. Today is his 60th birthday so happy, uh, happy birthday Rob. Very happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> And there we go. So one more step in the bespoke experience. Thank you.